Again, colostrum is going to be key to passive immunity. It provides supplemental energy to those lambs and uh, kids. Uh, our, our ruminant offspring are born with what we call brown fat. And that brown fat is the energy that they utilize uh, to get warm, to get dry, and get up on their feet and find the udder. Uh, once that brown fat is burned and it's burned quite quickly, our animals become really energy deficient. So that's why it's crucial that we get this energy dense colostrum into our animals. It also acts as a natural laxative to get that first meconium passed throughout their system. I've been asked recently what expected intakes would be for both colostrum and milk in general. And through our research online uh, and through our publications, it's estimated that about 10% of the birth weight should be, uh, can, or should be offered uh, to that offspring within the first 24 hours of life. So 10% of its body weight. So for example, a 10 pound lamb uh, or kid uh, needs to receive about a pound or 16, um, 16 ounces of colostrum uh, at, at the beginning of life. Half of this should be received within the first eight hours. And then we can also see that the recommendations are four feedings and four hour intervals as well, just to simply allow for that energy in that diet or in that milk to be spread out over the course of time. And then when we're thinking about uh, milk in general, if we've got any type of bottle rearing that we need to do, uh, milk intake is about a half to a one ounce per pound of body weight. And then we've also got the conversion factor there as well. If you guys have to tube, which we'll talk about here in just a minute, one ounce is going to equal to 30 cc's. Supplemental feeding may be required during this time period, either bottle or tubing. Uh, this may be the result of a weak animal, uh, prolonged labor, just simply wearing that uh, both the mother as well as the offspring out and mismothering. Whenever we're approaching the need for supplemental feeding, we always encourage that you attempt the bottle um, supplement first because this will stimulate the suckling uh, response of that lamb. And then again, we can tube if necessary we want to recommend that we never tube feed a cold uh, lamb or kid. It just simply does not benefit them. They're not able to utilize that uh, nutrition that we're providing them. We must first ensure that they are warm in order for that process to work appropriately. So what's considered cold uh, in our small ruminants, a normal body temp is going to be 102.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Mild hypothermia is going to be anywhere from 99 to 101. And then severe hypothermia is going to be less than 99. So if you've got animals that are in that mild hypothermia area and they're able to swallow, we recommend that you dry them with a towel and provide them with supplemental heat. You can put them into a hot box or several different types, methods, and models to be able to utilize with that, or simply put them underneath a heat lamp in a safe location. However, what if your animals are not able to swallow? They're unconscious or very weak. You can also utilize this method of doing an intraperitoneal injection of dextrose. And when we're doing this process, it's recommended to use a two to three solution, or two to three ratio solution. So uh, two parts, 50% dextrose uh, to three parts of boiled water. Uh, that dextrose should be um, stored at uh, room temperature. And once you are able to mix those two together, it will uh, equilibrate to the appropriate temperature to be utilized. For those that are looking for more information on how to do this uh, process themselves, you can take a look at the fact sheet provided by Alberta land producers that are provided on the OSU Sheep Team webpage. For colostrum, we need to think about orders of colostrum use, of course. For our lambs and our kids, uh, the most essential or critical or important beneficial type of colostrum that we can use is going to be that one directly from the dam. However, what if the dam uh, passed during parturition or she simply has no milk? Older ewes and does within the flocks or herd will be appropriate at that time point. These older animals have the appropriate antibodies or bugs that your flock and herd has themselves. If that's not an option, any animal within your operation will work with hopes that it's an appropriate animal that has a developed immune system. If we don't have any of those options at hand, we can utilize artificial colostrum and it's really a key to keep this on hand during these important time periods. We do have the ability to use goat or ewe colostrum uh, for either or species that are a part of our flock or from other farms. Uh, and then also uh, when we think about just trying to get colostrum, we're in a dire need issue where we absolutely need the colostrum, but we don't have any of the aforementioned uh, materials available to us. We can use cattle colostrum. 
However, there are some issues with using colostrums that are not associated with your species or your farm. Some of the issues that may arise are disease transfer, especially yonis, just a chronic wasting disease that can occur due to uh, the consumption of infected milk. This is certainly one of the biggest benefits of using on-farm colostrum due to the effects of passive immunity. Cattle and goat colostrum are good for our lambs, and then cattle colostrum good for our kids if it's available. But however, we do need to know that uh, although it's a good source of immunoglobulins, it may be diluted. For our lambs, especially if we're utilizing cattle or goat colostrum, it does have a lower nutritive value in terms of protein and fat, so it may not be nearly as effective. But again, in those periods of time of need where it's the absolute last option that you have available, those can be utilized. We also need to make sure we don't get tripped up between both colostrum replacer and supplement. Colostrum replacer is exactly that. It's designed to replace the colostrum that you don't have. It's a good source of our IgGs or IgGs. However, it's not specific. But do be careful when you're buying these products because there is what we call colostrum supplement. And this is simply to be added to our existing colostrum if it isn't of high quality. And then we do encourage, of course, to have that saved colostrum. Uh, this colostrum can be saved from ewes uh, that have an excessive amount of colostrum. You may be asking, well, what ewes or does are these? These may be individuals that had multiples at birth, uh, but not all of the um, individuals were viable at that time period. So for example, we do know that uh, a female that is designed to have twins and she's only going to be rearing a single due to maybe a stillbirth, she will produce naturally more milk uh, than a single bearing ewe or doe. And as we go into larger litters, uh, those females uh, physiologically will be producing more milk. So just be on the lookout for individuals that may be good donors for our colostrum. We do encourage you to warm it up gradually. Uh, and of course, we don't want to put this in a microwave as this will kill the beneficial antibodies that are being provided in here. And we've also got an array of ways that we can uh, save this colostrum. Of course, putting it in some of our smaller water bottles, these eight to 12 uh, fluid ounce water bottles allows us to thaw out a small amount each time without thawing out a large quantity of it. We can store it in our pre-made uh, syringes. A lot of folks actually put it in some of our ice trays and they'll uh, pop it out and put it into Ziploc bags. This is vacuum sealed. It works just as well. You can put it in a Ziploc bag as well. Make sure you put it in there and lay it flat uh, because as we start to thaw that out, we expose as much surface area as possible uh, to these bags to allow them to thaw out equally and evenly. And then also for our mothers out there that may have uh, some of these bags left over uh, from breastfeeding, of course, these are viable options as well. And then one point I did want to note before we ended the conversation about providing milk and colostrum to our animals. So say that we're able to effectively provide colostrum to a set of lambs or kids that uh, may have lost their mother. Of course, the dam is going to be per the most preferred and most effective. We may be able to graft some of those individuals off. But what if you're not able to graft these orphans or have multiples that the these females simply can't um, provide enough uh, milk to? We can provide it, uh, the supplemental feedings. There's several different delivery systems, uh, bottles, buckets, and automatics. And that really depends upon uh, your budget and how much you want to uh, invest into your operation. And we've got a really nice set of resources on the OSU Sheep Team webpage regarding this specific scenario. So with that, I would be happy to take any questions uh, before we go into our next presentation.